Today we will be talking about five different workout styles that all elite swimmers do. This stuff can drastically improve your swimming. Let's dive into it. The first training style that we're gonna talk about is one that a lot of coaches would argue is the most important, and that is true race pace. We're talking VO2 max, real simulated race pace, a type of set like ones up here where there's a certain amount of rest that allows you to actually hit race pace, whether that's 200 back end race pace, whether that's middle 50, 100 meter race pace, something along those lines, a set like this. A classic 10.50 50s on 130-200 pace. If you're fit enough, ideally the athlete should be able to hit their actual 200 race pace for 10.50s with that amount of rest. Similarly, another set 40-25s on 45 seconds, 50 seconds, something like that. One of my personal favorite VO2 max sets is this right here. Four rounds and there is rest in between rounds to recover where you're going 275s on 230, 350s on 130, and then 425s on 45. Once again, hitting that VO2 max range, that percentage of race pace or true race pace for about that 1600 meters if you do four rounds of that set. Most high level programs that have developed Olympians do sets like that on a weekly basis. Now in contrast with VO2 max and true race pace, on the other side of the scale, you have active rest. Active rest is probably my favorite style of training. This is good because you are working on speed, you are working on hitting percentages of race pace. However, you're also building your capacity. You're also building that aerobic system as well. Here is an example of an active rest set. 2100s on maybe 130 short course yards, First 50 is at pace. Maybe it's at 200 pace. Maybe it's at 90% of 200 pace, something along those lines. The second 50 is just easy, smooth swimming. And then by the time you get to the wall, you're really only passively resting, sitting on the wall for 15 seconds tops. A great example of an active rest set is one like this, where you're doing rounds with a larger amount of time in between rounds, but the rest within the rounds themselves is very short. So right here, you have five rounds of four or 100s. Once again, the first 50 is at pace, the second 50 is easy smooth swimming. That's a recovery second 50, but the overall interval on those four 100s is much shorter. Maybe it's 120, maybe it's 115. Another set would be like that, hit pace, actively recover, short amount of rest on the wall, and you're only doing that for a few repetitions, and then you have a break, and then you repeat through rounds. I love those sets. Active rest is a style of training that I don't think enough programs implement regularly. It is, it, it's just, it's like a foundation that everybody should just be building off of. If you really wanna get ambitious and really build that foundation and that fitness level of your athletes, a set like this, something that is 3,000, maybe 3,500 meters long, Starting off long, a 300, two 200s, four 150s, eight 100s, 1650s. Once again, there's a chunk at the beginning of each repetition there that is at a certain pace, and then the rest of that rep is swim out and the interval kind of shifts. Usually you get, like a set like this, you're gaining more rest as you work your way through it. So by the time you get to the 50s, you're getting a little more rest. The idea here is as you work your way through the set, down towards the 50s, you're getting faster and you're recovering through the easy swimming. You gotta love it. And now up next is best average style training. We do a lot of this stuff here at the Indiana University swim team. A set like this, three different rounds of eight 100s, maybe it's short course yards on 140. The first set is eight 100s kick, the second set is eight 100s pull, and the third set is eight 100s swim. You're taking a few minutes in between each eight 100, but overall, you're trying to hold your fastest pace for a substantial duration through those eight 100s. And ideally, the last few hundreds are a little bit faster. Now this is a set that you would do every few weeks to just test your fitness level and see the improvements throughout the season. A good old fashioned best average set right here, four rounds of 850, starting off between 85 and 90%. And then ideally, that last set of 850s would be as close to race pace as possible. Best average style swimming is similar to VO2 max, however, generally speaking, 
speaking, VO2 max, you're truly hitting race pace and you can only sustain that for so much. With best average, you're working percentages. You're working 80%, 85% of race pace. So you can hold that for a greater volume, for a much longer set. Like a set like this, you know, you're doing 40, 50s where you're actually holding a specific pace. And now we are moving on to sprinter's paradise, to lactate testing, to max out efforts from the blocks, also referred to as stand-up sets. A traditional set, five 100s from a dive on about eight minutes, no swimming out in between. You gotta let that, that muscle fatigue just kind of sit and simmer, build up that lactic acid in your body. And as you progress through the season, a lot of times teams will start to add a little amount of swim out in between the repetitions to kind of filter out that system and get yourself ready for racing. As you lead into the end of the season, there's a lot of different ways to do lactate. It is truly the most painful if done correctly. In a perfect world, an athlete is able to hit race pace on number one and make maintain it through the set, through the, the 875s from the blocks that you're doing. But realistically, you're probably flying and dying, right? Most sprinters are going out lightning fast. Maybe they're able to hang on for two or three of those 75s, and then they start to diminish, right? Then all of a sudden the time goes down. Let me give you an example. I have done this exact stand-up set with Blake Peroni and Zach Apple, two men who both go 47 seconds in the long course 100 meter freestyle. On a set like this, the first 350s on, you know, let's say four to five minutes, I believe is what we went on, they're diving 19s in the 50 free. And then as they start to fatigue, as we start to get to number six, seven, eight, they, they fade into the 20 point, 20 point mid range, and they just try to hold on. I'm not that fast. I don't go 19 regularly in practice. I believe it doesn't matter if you're a 50 meter freestyler, a 400 IMer, or a long course 1500 swimmer. You've gotta know what it feels like to truly max yourself out and die. You have to push yourself to your breaking point in order to keep chipping away and pushing that boundary back. So all swimmers need to be doing some form of stand up lactate racing. I, I really believe that. And now that brings us to our fifth style of training on this list, power, maximum power. And there's two elements to training power, muscular strength and muscular endurance. If you're training true, true raw power, you're focusing on muscular strength, a set like this, four rounds with substantial rest in between rounds where you're doing one very heavy loaded pulley, you know, a weighted resisted system, 125 maximum effort, and then you're waiting, you're resting, you see the interval right there, maybe that's on two minutes, into, I like contrasting resisted with non-resisted swimming, into another 25, no resistance, all max. So see the set right there? It's essentially two 25s with a true amount of rest, where you're going heavy, heavy resistance into non-resisted maximum speed. Now on the flip side of that coin, you have muscular endurance. This is training your power output over a more extended period of time. An example of a set right there. You're going 1275s with a parachute where the first 25 is maximum effort and then the remaining 50 yards is just smooth, easy swimming. So you're still swimming with that resistance, but you're dialing it back down a notch. Another example of muscular endurance training would be a set like 1625s on a cord. You know those bungee cords that you either have a teammate hold or you hook into the wall. You're swimming across the pool at a specified effort. Obviously with a cord, it's gonna get harder as you swim down and then you swim back. And the interval when it comes to muscular endurance is gonna be a little tighter. So maybe you're doing those 25s on a minute, so you're really cranking through it, right? You're building up that endurance. Here at our program, we like to implement this style of resisted training towards the end of our workout. So in a lot of our breaststroke practices that you all have seen in a lot of my vlogs, we will end with you know 15 or 20 resisted pulleys at a specified weight and a specified effort level where we're getting a moderate moderate amount of rest, but overall it's more like you're training the endurance system with the resistance opposed to sometimes when you're doing true power, you're getting lots of rest, you're using more weight. I think you need to have a contrast of both. You need to be doing a little bit of everything. Of all the things that I just listed, VO2 max, active rest, best average, lactate or stand-up sets, and power. 
the most well-rounded programs that develop Olympians, NCAA champions, world record holds, all those types of things. All five of these training styles get cycled through on a weekly basis. Now obviously, there is a gigantic umbrella of different styles of training that people do all across the world that are important. It's important to train the aerobic system. It's important to do threshold training. You know, depending on your events, everything gets specified, all that stuff. But in my opinion, these five methods of training are things that everyone should be implementing to some degree. And there's a lot of different ways to do those things. The important thing is, what do you all think? Am I missing something? What is your favorite style of training? What is the most important piece of training for varying different levels of swimmers? Let me know in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this list, and now let's take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Upside. Now, Upside is an incredible app for anyone who regularly buys gas, groceries, or dines out. With every purchase, I'm earning cash back thanks to Upside. I have been using Upside for a few months now, and I was shocked at how much money I was getting back. It's really a no-brainer. Obviously, inflation has hit everyone hard, and so now when I go to buy gas, before that, I just open up my app and I look at what the deals are on the nearby gas stations. 34 cents back per gallon, 28 cents back per gallon, 20 you know, and the list just goes on and on and on. In compared to credit card rewards or loyalty programs, you can earn up to three times more cash back with Upside. You can cash out at any time directly to your bank account, to your PayPal, to an Amazon gift card, you know, whatever you want to do. Upside users are earning more than a million dollars per week, which is probably why they have a 4.8 star rating on the App Store. It's really easy to get started. You just download the free Upside Upside app in the App Store or in the Google Play Store. Use promo code Miller and get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. You just claim your offer on the app, you check in at the location when you're there, you buy whatever you're buying, you pay regularly, and then you just you get paid on the app. It's that simple. If you're interested, download the free Upside app at upside.app.link slash Miller to get $5 cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Link is in the description below. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. All the normal stuff right there. If you'd like a personalized video from me, I'm on Cameo. There's still a few tank tops. Only good days summer edition tanks are available. And we have new videos every single week, guys. So please hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment down there below. Let me know what you think hit that like button, and until my next video, I will see you all later.